Hi, and welcome to our third discovery session with Navigate Rebar, where we'll be looking at our new reinforcement connection tools. Rebar connections are an important part of detailing and quite often are not automated as they tend to become overcomplicated and a little bit difficult to use. Another challenge is that there are so many possibilities of how connections between elements can be detailed, especially when trying to support worldwide standards. With our connection tools, we have opted for a modular approach which allows the users to add connections between elements, faces and edges. This flexibility will allow for a large number of connections to be constructed from our modular tools. Let's start by taking a look at a column to column connection with straight bars. On the rebar tab, we'll go ahead and select a connection. We're then prompted to select a face or an edge. So in this case here, I'll select the top face of the column and then I'll select the host. So that's going to be the bottom column here. Of course, that's where the rebar will be fixed. In the connection reinforcement dialog, you can see that the left hand panel contains the various different connection types. The right hand side has all the various settings we'd need to set things like the shape code, diameter and length of bar. You'd also notice that we can actually go ahead and save connection configurations as templates and then we can recall those at a later point. So let's begin by configuring this connection type here. I'm going to begin by actually setting the S dimension, which is the distance between the two bars. Now, of course, what's really good with Naviate is that all of the tools are modeless. So if I couldn't remember what the distance was, I can simply just go to the uh, distance tool here and I can then take a measurement between those two bars. But in this example here, we'll go ahead and set that to 360. We can then set the length of the bars. I can either set an overall length of the bar or I can actually set a lap. So in this case, I'll set that to 800. We can then configure our bar type. So again here, we're going to use H20s. And then I can either specify the number of bars or I could set the spacing. To apply the connection, I simply click the apply tool and you'll then see that the connection has been modeled. On the rebar tab in the visualization panel, I can then select show obscured to actually then visualize those bars that we've just modeled. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close down the connection reinforcement dialog. And we'll now look at adding some starter bars from the pad foundation to a column. In this example, we could use L bars with the legs opposed or facing each other. In this case, we will use the L bars with the legs opposite. Okay, so let's begin by selecting the connection tool again. And once again here, we're prompted to select a face or a line. So here I can select the bottom face of the column. And then of course, the bar will be fixed and hosted into the foundation. So for the connection type, of course, here, we're going to use a double L bar, but we could also use this configuration in the bottom left here, which are also L bars, but you can see that they're opposed. Okay, so let's now start to configure this. So you'll see that the B dimension is in fact the leg length of the L bar. So I'm going to set that to 600. Again, the spacing we can set, so we'll set that to 350. We'll keep the lap set to 800. And again, the bar type will actually leave at H20. But the shape I actually want to set to shape code 11. It's also important to understand that all of the shape codes and rebar types are simply loaded into Naviate Rebar from your current template. Again, we can specify the number of bars that we want to generate or the spacing in between them. Now, another thing that's really quite useful with this type of connection is we can go and specify the CA value. Basically, that's the distance from the cover. Now, rather than actually having to calculate that manually, I can just simply go ahead and select this. So in this case, I'm going to select the bottom layer of bars, which is this layer here. And you can see that Navier automatically recovers that distance for us. We can then go ahead and apply that by selecting the apply tool. And once again, I can go to show obscured to actually visualize that reinforcement connection. Okay, so again, we'll close down the connection reinforcement dialog box and we can now see that connection modeled within the foundation and the column. Let's now take a look at a wall corner. So again, here we can see that we've already got reinforcement in our walls. Obviously there we've used our wall tool to actually apply that reinforcement. And now what I'd like to do is make a connection between the two walls. So again, we can go back and use our connection tool. Once again, we're prompted to pick an edge or a face. So I'll select this edge here. And then I can actually pick the host. In this case, I'll pick this back wall. So we can now start to configure this. So the connection type will be this one in the bottom right hand corner. One of the neat things with this is you can see that we can actually set longitudinal bar as well. Again, we can set our lap. So here you can see that's still set to 800. So perhaps I'll reduce that. We'll use 550 there. The bar type will match in as H12. 
The shape codes that we want to use here are UBARS, which is of course in the UK going to be shape code 21. And again here we can specify a number of bars, or in this case we can go directly to spacing and then we can configure our spacing. So here we'll set this to 250, and then again we can go ahead and apply that connection. To visualise it, again we'll select show obscured, and there we can see our wall reinforcement actually connecting the two walls together. Finally, we'll also look at another use case for our connection reinforcement command. So you can see over here I've got a floor, and currently there's no reinforcement in this at all. What I might want to do is use our connection reinforcement to actually get U-bars around the perimeter of the slab. So this is something we can actually do. We don't have to connect two elements together. So now I'm going to demonstrate our templating here. So I'm going to use the U-bars in the top and bottom face, like so. What we can then do is go ahead and select the faces. So I'm going to select this face here and then the actual slab itself, apply that. And again, I can sh say show obscured to actually see those U-bars in place. We'll then use the template for the next set of U-bars, which is going to be in the T2, B2 layer. Again, we can select the face that we want to apply these uh, U-bars to, and then the host. And again, I can go to apply, and then show obscured. And obviously now, we can see that they're all now in that correct layer. So we don't just have to use these for connections. We can actually use them to help us out with other types of reinforcement within elements. So, in summary, I hope you'd agree that our connection reinforcement tool is simple and easy to use, but also very powerful as we've modularized each of these connection types and can apply these multiple times to single elements or connecting elements. Of course, as time goes on, we'll add more and more connection types into the connection reinforcement dialog. Okay, hope that was useful and look forward to seeing you in Discovery Session 4.